Now, this is the type of question that you have for homework. All three of your problems are, uh, well, actually, they're the same problem, just dressed up differently. They really are. On a wristwatch, one of the old-style ones with a second hand, what is the angular velocity, magnitude, and direction of the second hand? Talk to Nimrod. See if Nimrod can solve this problem. Let's look at it together. The magnitude of this velocity is really quite easy to calculate. A second hand goes once around every minute. Well, we usually talk about what angle does it go through in one second. Well, if it goes through two pi radians once around in 60 seconds, and 2 pi is 6 and change, well, when you divide 6 by 60, you get about a tenth. So it's about a tenth of a radian per second. The hard part is the direction. Now, because we're talking about the second hand on a, a watch, I would like to say clockwise. Because, hey, if you can't say your clock is going clockwise, what is, right? But that brings up some special problems. What direction is that wheel spinning, Barrett? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise. counterclockwise. What do you think, Elizabeth? Is he, uh, you got it right, or is he a lion sack of spin? Clockwise. Oh, clockwise. Counterclockwise. Really depends on which side you're on. Now it turns out when you're using your wristwatch, you're always on the same side of the wristwatch. But as we saw in this wheel of serious injury, with many problems in rotation, it's impossible to say on the same side of the problem because they're inherently three-dimensional. As this thing was processing around, we kept on finding ourselves on different sides of the wheel. And so we can't really use clockwise and counterclockwise to describe the direction of this angular velocity. Now, with linear velocity, we used a vector. And it was very simple to do. It was out our front windshield if we were going down the road in, uh, in a forward direction. If we were in reverse, it was out the back windshield. It was the direction we were going. Now the question is, how would I assign a vector to this rotation such that it would make sense? In other words, how could I represent this rotation right here such that I could just hand you a vector and that vector would tell you how to spin the wheel, how to orient the wheel, and how to spin the wheel. Talk to Nimrod, see if you can come up with a way that you could use this vector to describe that rotation. Okay, the problem is that a vector cannot curve. I can't put a curved arrow and call it a vector. A vector only has one direction, and so it has to be straight. 
Now, if I try to use this vector to represent any part of the wheel, well, as the wheel turns, the direction's going to change. If I put it along the spokes, that direction is going to change. Every part of this wheel is changing direction as it goes round, except what? Except for the axis. Except for the axis. And that's how we define the direction of the omega vector, of the angular velocity vector, along the axis. It seems goofy, I know, but that's the only part of the wheel that's not changing direction. So if I were to say the omega vector points this way, you could line up the axis that way, and then you would know how the wheel was rotating. Now, here's a little bit of a wrinkle. It turns out that there's two ways to point along an axis, which is convenient because there's also two ways to rotate about any given axis. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to associate one direction along the axis with this rotation, and I'm going to associate the other direction along the axis with the other rotation. The question is, how to decide which one goes with which? Well, it turns out the decision was made many, many years ago by a group of dead white physicists, and it turns out that everyone in the room was right-handed. And so they came up with something called the right-hand rule. With the right-hand rule, what we do is we curl the fingers of our right hand in the direction the wheel is rotating. Our right thumb is pointing along the axis in the direction of the omega vector. So if I rotated it about the axis that way, I would have to use my right hand, rotate my fingers in the direction it's spinning, my thumb would now 